Christmas is meant to be a time of happiness, joy, and a special time to spend the day with your family. However, for some people, the Christmas spirit ended in tragedy when terrible things happened on or close to Christmas Day, leaving the community bewildered, confused, and scared. These mysterious events left a dark cloud over what should have been a happy occasion. Today, we'll be counting down the six bizarre unsolved Christmas mysteries. Number 6. Matilda Rooney In 1885, a farmhand named John Larson spent Christmas with Patrick and Matilda Rooney, his employers. Patrick and Matilda Rooney were an elderly couple who lived just outside of Seneca, Illinois. Sharing several drinks over the night, Larson decided to retire for the evening and went to bed. However, during the night, he suddenly woke up with a coughing fit, struggling to get his breath before finally drifting off to sleep again. On the Christmas morning, Larson woke up and was shocked to find traces of soot on his pillow. He then went downstairs, where he found Patrick dead in his bedroom. Larson decided to look for Matilda, but could not see her anywhere. He wandered into the kitchen, where he found a bizarre, large, blackened hole in the floor. Resting alongside this mysterious black hole, was the charred remains of a human foot. It was discovered that this was the remains of Matilda Rooney and it appeared she was a victim of spontaneous human combustion. This mysterious phenomenon caused the body to catch a light and burn to ash at an estimated 1,400 degrees Celsius. What makes this case so bizarre is there were no other signs of damage from the fire. It was later found that Matilda's husband Patrick had died of smoke inhalation. This was the reason why Larson woke up coughing in the middle of the night. However, he did not die because his bedroom door was closed on the second floor. Speculation soon arose whether Larson could have murdered Matilda. However, detectives soon excluded the possibility as the blazing fire would have damaged the rest of the house. Many believed that the true cause of Matilda Rooney's combustion was from her excessive alcohol consumption, with some religious fanatics even suggesting that a death was retribution for drinking too much on Christmas Eve. Number 5. Kevin Showalter On 1973 on Christmas Eve, college student Kevin Showalter was driving through New London, Connecticut with his girlfriend when they got a flat tire and Kevin was forced to pull over. As he was changing the tire, he was suddenly struck and killed by a passing vehicle. What makes this case suspicious is when Kevin's mother went to pick up his belongings from the scene, the on-duty policeman told her Kevin's death would probably remain unsolved. Shocked by this statement, Kevin's mother started her own investigation on her son's death and uncovered allegations of shoddy police work and a potential cover-up. One potential suspect was the former mayor of New London, Harvey Malove. Malove was seen driving through the area at the time of Kevin's death and provided testimony where eyewitnesses had contradicted his account of the incident. Even though Malove was the most likely perpetrator, he was released without charge due to lack of evidence and Malove still maintained his innocence. The case took an unexpected turn in 1979 when a man named Paul Hansom confessed to the hit and run of Kevin Showalter. Due to the expiration of the statute of limitations, Hansom was never charged, and the grand jury even determined there was not enough evidence to support his claim. In 2005, Hansom committed suicide and left a chilling note claiming yet again that he was responsible for Kevin's death. Police decided to reopen the case, however, they denied the local media access to the requested transcripts from the earlier investigations, where an astounding 3,000-page transcript from the original grand jury investigation of Malove had gone missing, making Kevin Showalter's case even more mysterious and disturbing. Number 4. Real Author 
almost every person who celebrates Christmas has heard the poem A Visit from St Nicholas, also known as Twas the Night Before Christmas. Surprisingly, the history of this poem has some mystery surrounding it. That is, nobody knows who wrote it. A Visit from St Nicholas was mailed by an unknown author to the Sentinel, a newspaper in Troy, New York, and was originally published on December the 23rd, 1823. The poem built up wide popularity while the author's identity remained unknown. Eventually in 1844, Clement Clark Moore, a professor, stated that he was responsible for writing the poem and that he'd asked one of his friends to send the poem to the Sentinel. It is said that Moore was reluctant to claim responsibility for the poem because he was embarrassed by it and did not consider it to be scholarly. Alternatively, other historians are more skeptical of Moore's claims. Powerful evidence presented in 2000 by Professor Donald Wayne Foster suggested the actual author of A Visit from St Nicholas to be Henry Livingston Jr., who had died in 1828. Foster had cited how the poem held a strong likeness to Livingston's other works. It was also claimed that Moore's apparent bitter and unsentimental disposition did not resonate with such a work, and that the poem did not match his personality. One of the more convincing pieces of evidence favouring Livingston as the real author is that the last two names of Santa's reindeer in the poem were initially Dunder and Blixen, but due to a printing error had become Donda and Blitzen. After many years, Moore had written out copies of this poem, but had however made the same mistake spelling the names as Donda and Blitzen. Dunder and Blixem are in fact words in Dutch, meaning thunder and lightning. However, Moore did not speak any Dutch, while Livingston did. After two centuries, the controversy still continues as to who really wrote Twas the Night Before Christmas. Number 3. Patty Vaughan On Christmas Day 1996 in Lavernia, Texas, 32-year-old Patty Vaughan vanished after leaving her home. Her car was discovered 25 kilometers away from her home with a flat tire and traces of blood were found along with a red workman's jumpsuit. Before Patty's disappearance, she had apparently been in an argument with her estranged husband, J.R. The couple had three children together before separating two months earlier. Many believe that J.R. was possessive of Patty and was jealous to see her dating another man. Suspicions grew when J.R. filed for divorce the day after Patty disappeared. After investigators checked Patty's home, they found traces of blood in Patty's bedroom, along with a mop indicating that someone had recently cleaned the house. DNA evidence confirmed that the bloodstains found were indeed from Patty. However, they found no evidence to implicate her husband in Patty's mysterious disappearance, and JR took custody of their three children, leaving the state. However, this did not stop investigators from looking further into JR's past, where they discovered during the disappearance of Patty, he had worked at construction in a nearby school located in Natalia. Investigators have not ruled out the possibility that Patty's body could have been disposed of in the concrete foundation, indicating that multiple people could have disposed of Patty's body. DNA testing was performed on her car years later and the DNA was found to be a female, but did not belong to Patty Vaughan, adding more intrigue to her case. Number 2. Tracy Mertens In 1994, 31-year-old Tracy Mertens had recently moved to Rochdale, England with her boyfriend Joey and their two children. After the move, Tracy decided to return to their former home two days before Christmas to pick up the remainder of their things. However, while at the house, she heard a knock on the door and when she answered, two men came breaking in and screaming, Where's Joey? Tracy told them she had no idea before they abducted her. The two men drove to the steps of a church in Eton before dousing her with petrol and setting her alight. When Tracy was discovered, she was still alive and was taken to hospital we she had lived long enough to describe what happened before she passed away on Christmas Eve. Tracy and Joey's relationship had been on the rocks and investigators found that Joey 
had been a frequent user of heroin and owed people money at the time of Tracy's attack. However, Joey disputed this claim, stating he had no idea who was responsible. Tracy Merton's case is still unsolved. Number 1. Latricia White On Christmas Day 1994, 38-year-old Latricia White from Texas was at home with a boyfriend, Lee Dub Wackerhagen, and his 9-year-old son called Chance. Chance decided to call his mother and requested to stay a few days more with his father. She obliged. However, on the 27th of December, the three of them had not made contact with anyone and Latricia's father decided to visit her home. Upon entering the house, he was shocked to find his daughter's body on the bed. She had been shot and Dub and Chance Wackerhagen had vanished. Dub was known to have a violent streak and witnesses had heard the couple arguing a few days before Christmas. Detectives quickly issued a warrant for Dub Wackerhagen's arrest. However, they found that Dub and Chance Wackerhagen had simply disappeared. Had they gone on the run as fugitives? Or were they both victims themselves? This case made an unexpected turn when Dub's pickup truck was discovered in a field and inside they found Dub's wallet and a checkbook and a heap of Christmas presents covered in blood. Upon testing the blood, they found it did not match Latricia, indicating that Dub and Chance may have fallen victims themselves. Months later, a disturbing incident occurred when Chance's grandmother received a phone call from an anonymous young boy saying, help me, before the line was cut off. To this day, no one knows if Dub and Chance Wackerhagen were the victims of an horrendous Christmas crime or if they're hiding out somewhere avoiding capture. The case is still unsolved. <laughs>